Hi, good afternoon and welcome to today's uh, civil service fast stream and diversity internship program E-Tray Q&A webinar. Uh, my name is Oris Ikomi and I am delighted to have you all uh, join, in to the, uh, join in today. So before we get started, I'm just going to quickly introduce myself um, so, and what I do at Elevation Network. So my role and responsibility is to ensure that you are all uh, supported and um, trained during the application process uh, for the Civil Service Fast Trim and Diversity Internship Program. Uh, so for example, running uh, webinars and running one-to-one -one coaching. So it's about empowering and equipping everyone who are applying to the program to ensure that they are you know, have a, a strong chance of being successful. Okay, I've just been told that the line isn't so clear to speak up a bit more. Um, thank you for prompting that. So I hope you can all hear me a lot better now. So as I say, my name is Oris Ikomi and my role within Elevation Networks is to facilitate uh, a range of our training programs to support candidates who are applying to um, internship and grad scheme programs such as the civil service diversity and internship program so i'm going to be leading on, on today's webinar and i just want to say i'm delighted to have you all um here today and looking forward to you know engaging a conversation with all of you to a go through whatever questions you may have and um and ensure that you are fully informed um, by the end of this webinar before we get started I'd um, just like to find out a bit more about who we have, um, just a bit more about yourselves and your background, and particularly um, what you are hoping to get out of um, the webinar. So if I could ask you to use the button. So you have a Q&A button um, as well as a chat button. So if you have any questions towards the end, if I could suggest that you use that to ask your questions, but in the meantime, you can use the chat button just to share what you would like to get out of the webinar. So just take the next uh, two minutes or so just to hear from all of you and you can share with me what you'd want to get out of today's session. Thank you. So that's that. Anyone, you can all, uh, whoever you are, just by all means, go. Uh, feel free to, to share your thoughts and what you'd want to get out of today. So I'd like to get familiar with the e-tray, okay? understand the E-Tray. I want to get familiar with the interview process. Um, just to clarify uh, to Simba, uh, can you clarify what you mean by the interview process? Because the purpose of today's webinar is to focus specifically on the E-Tray exercise. So as I said, we'd like to get a better understanding of how the competency framework is woven into the E-Tray. So it will be my first time doing an E-Tray exercise, so looking forward to guidance and tips. So am I right in thinking that you have all made it through the situational judgment and behavioral test? Am I right in thinking that you've all made it past the first stage of the application, i.e. the first stage of the online test, the situational judgment and behavioral test? I'll just get a quick confirmation just to see if there's anyone that has yet to do the first stage. Okay, so I'm so still waiting for the edge data to be unlocked on my profile, unfortunately. I've done the test, but waiting for confirmation. And someone said they're still waiting for the edge, um, still waiting. Okay, just going through these quickly. So I'll be doing my... Still waiting for the SJT to be unlocked on my computer profile, unfortunately. SJT and is unlocked for, my, for, for me yet. And I've done the test, but waiting for results. Yes, passed the SJT and behavioral, congratulations. And still waiting for it to be unlocked. Uh, still waiting. So most of you are still waiting. Um, by still waiting, do you mean you're still wait, waiting for, for you to be sent the link to the situation of judgment test?
Okay, okay, uh, that, that, that's clear. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Okay, well, it's, it's, it's good. What's really good as well is that you, you, you know, you're all planning ahead and not waiting until you receive your results before you engage in this webinar, which is fantastic. So it's good, it's good to see that the full thinking and plan ahead. So that's, I mean, what I like so far is that about five or so, five or six people have been very interactive. I'm really keen to hear from the from any of you that are yet to you know comment or respond. I'm really keen to hear from everyone what they would like to get out of today's webinar. So if that's you, if you haven't met yet made any uh, comment or or respond to any of the questions so far, can I? I would you know I'd like to encourage you to please you know share your thoughts because that way it helps us to understand that everyone is getting value out of the webinar. Again, it's absolutely fine. I mean, it's, you're not forced. Um, but I mean, it's obviously, if you are so subject to what you're comfortable to sharing, but the you know. To really get the most out of this webinar, I was encouraged to participate fully by uh, responding to questions or sharing your thoughts if there's something you're not clear, clear about. So that way we can um, ensure that everyone leaves uh, fully, uh, you know, leaves with, with value. So if that's you and you have to share or respond to anything, if God, can I, um, could you, I mean, would you be happy to share what you'd like to get after the, after the webinar? And for those of you who have responded so far, um, is there anything else that you'd like to cover? Understand how it works, have never done one before. Excellent. Okay. So just to let you all know, so today's webinar is going to be more of a you know, addressing, a, a, go through a presentation of what the e trade exercise is and what the civil service are looking for and what would be assessed, uh, particularly for the e trade exercise. Um, we won't be able to have a chance to practice one live. However, and what you can do if you wish to practice a live e trade exercise would be to go on a website called Assessment day.co.uk. On there, you'll be able to access um, a free version of the e trade exercise. So that's assessmentday.co.uk. You have to access free uh, webinar resources. In addition to that, you, you, there's also the option to pay for, to buy a paid version, um, which is $14.99. So that way you can use the practice, not just for the civil service, but also practice for other ones that you may have in the future. So those are the two options. Um, we are currently in the process of seeing if we can uh, create one. And once that's been confirmed, a communication will go out to everyone doing the E-Trade exercise. So today's just to go, go for a, a quick presentation about the E-Trade exercise, what to expect and what the civil service are looking for, and then go through any key questions that I may not have covered during the webinar. I hope that's clear. And with that said, I'm going to get started. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Again, if you have any questions, please save it till the, um, you can ask your questions during the, whilst I'm speaking, but I will respond to the questions at the end. Thank you. So, so just about, so what is an e -trade exercise? So for those of you who are not familiar with an e -trade exercise, it basically is, um, is a scenario of emails where you're giving us, you're giving a background information about the organization, about who they are, what they do, and what the scenario is that they want you to focus on. And then you'll then be shared a number of information documents that provide exercise background, and then you're expected to respond to a series of emails relating to that information. And the idea is, is for you to respond based on the order of importance and priority and looking through the instructions and understanding what's expected before responding to the email. So again, this will make a lot more sense when you you know, when you have the chance to do a practice online. And that's the idea and purpose behind the e-trade exercise, just to measure against your decision-making 
collaboration and managing quality as well as delivering that pace. So for the civil service, these are the key areas that they are focusing on. So the each ex exercise should be assessed based on your openness to ideas and decision-making, collaborating, managing quality and delivering at pace. So I'm, 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 I'm assuming, I'm hoping that by now you all would have gone through the civil service competency framework document, which has a list of the civil service competencies and what they are looking for in each area. So when responding to the ETRA exercise, the idea is to have an, a, a, a prior understanding of the competencies and then respond to the questions based on your understanding of the competencies. So for example, one of them is open to ideas. What does civil service means by being open, being open to open to ideas is someone who is someone who is able to, you know, see the bigger picture and having an end of understanding and knowledge of how their role fits with and supports organizational objects and why the public needs and the national interest. So it's looking at how you're able to able to contribute on the activities which would meet the civil service goals and delivering greater values. And for decision making, decision making, so in other words, making effective decisions is looking at, bear with me, is looking at your ability to make, to use sound judgment, evidence and knowledge to arrive at an accurate expert and professional decisions and advice. So it's about being careful and thoughtful about the use and protection of government and public information to ensure it is handled securely and with care. And with collaborating with most organizations, you'll be working, pretty much every organization, you'll be working as part of a team. So the reason why this is important is because the civil service wants to ensure that the people that they bring on board, not just not only can they work as a team, but they demonstrate certain qualities, certain collaborative qualities and ability to work in partnership with other people from different backgrounds. So with this, it's focusing on your ability to be a good uh, a team player and you know, sharing information appropriately and building a supportive trust and professional relationships with colleagues and a wide range of people within and outside the civil service whilst having the confidence to challenge assumptions. So in some, uh, traditionally, or in some cases, as human beings, we have the tendency to do things to work on our own, or we may feel comfortable to work on our own. However, when in transition to a, transition into an organization, as I mentioned earlier, you are working with people from different backgrounds. So it's, 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 it's important to be able to demonstrate your ability to be able to work with people from different areas. And not just that, is looking at how you're also contributing to your colleagues and team within your department. So this is why these are the areas that are, that's, uh, that's why this is crucial in terms of an area that the civil service looks, looks for. And then managing quality, quality service. So it's about, with managing quality service, it's about valuing and modeling professional excellence and expertise to deliver service objectives taking account of diverse customer needs and requirements. So it's looking at when you're delivering a program or a project, you know, what evidence are you basing your decisions on? Who are you delivering for? So having a, a broader understanding of the, of the diverse customer range and needs that you're working for to ensure that, you know, that's delivered effectively. So by quality, uh, quality means different things to different organizations. When the case of the civil service is about, you know, meeting, the needs of diverse customers and the general public that you are serving. And doing so in a way that is secure, reliable and efficient and using tools such as project and risk management to support service delivery. So again, when doing the ETRA exercises, looking for clues that reflects these com competencies when responding to them. So the last one being del delivering at pace. So again, it's about looking at your means to focus on delivering timely performance with energy and taking responsibility and, account and accountability for quality outcomes. So again, when responding to the question the intro exercise is looking for, let's say there's, a, there's an urgent task to, um, an, an email to, to, to you know, submit a, a policy document uh, urgently. So in that case, so if you just compare that with other emails that you may have in your inbox, 
the assumption is you would respond to that urgently because there is a, a time is time sensitive. So it's how someone mentioned earlier. So it's looking at how the competences link to the ETRA exercise. So what you want to, by really looking in depth into what these different competencies mean, the idea is to then link that understanding into drawing out how you would position or how you'd address the emails within the ETRA exercise. So that's an example of ways that you can link the ETRA, so link the competencies to the ETRA exercise. Again, I'll come back to competencies uh, shortly. So when completing the ETRA exercise, the tips are to review all background information which you were provided with, but also to try and prioritize attention and to work at an even pace and not spending too much time on one question over the other, and also to carefully select your responses. So here is an example of what an E-Tray exercise looks like. So, in this case, there are a range of email addresses for you to sift through. So it's about looking through the different emails and actioning them based on the order of priority. And what you, if you if, um, think a few things that you notice on the screen is there is a timer at the top right. So with the civil service, it should be time for about 80 minutes to complete the exercise. And the advice is to ensure that you're in a quiet place where there are no distractions or people around you to um, to impact in your concentration. Again, just to build up more on the competencies which I referred to earlier, the purpose of a competency framework for organisations is to use it as a way to, you know, to um, to measure people's performance as well as use to recruit a new talent into the organisation. The temptation that most people fall, fall into is they respond to questions based on how they think it should be responded to, based on how they would do it in their normal day-to-day -day lives, which there's nothing wrong with that. However, what you want to bear in mind is you are, you are you're being assessed because the organization wants to see what level you're at or to see where you're at against what they look for as an employee or what they define as the ideal employee. But this is why it's important that you get your, almost like get yourself into the mindset of a civil servant and you achieve this by really, you know, studying and understanding the competency framework, which you can also find if you don't have a copy of that just yet, you can also find a copy of it on, by typing in civil service competency framework on Google. And the level that you want to focus on, which some of you may already know, is level three. So by really studying that, you want to start immerse, immersing yourself and start almost out, you know, adjusting your behavior and your thinking in line with how the civil service thinks. Again, you may disagree with some of the way that the civil service thinks, but the idea is to, you know, for the purpose of the assessment, is to adapt and adjust to what they expect and respond to the questions based on that. So here are the list of the full competencies, but I've gone through the key ones that, that they'll be focusing on in the ETRA exercise. So I mentioned so such as the seeing the bigger picture, changing and improving, making effective decisions, leading and communicating, collaborating and partnering, building capability for all, managing the quality of service, delivering that pace, achieving commercial outcomes, and delivering value for money. Again, this will be relevant to those of you who are yet to complete your situation of judgment test. Again, you'll be assessed, as, and as included in the behavioral test, you'll be assessed against these different competency areas. For the sake of the situation of judgment test, the area that you want to focus on the most is decision making. However, you want to understand and familiarize with the whole, with all 10 uh, competency areas. So that's just more of an overview about the E-Tray exercise and what to expect and what the competencies are, what the civil service is looking for. And I hope that's given a bit of a, 
an insight into what to expect and how to address the questions. And, you know, if you have, well, while doing now to go through any questions that you may have to really have more of an in-depth uh, discussions around some of the barriers or challenges or things that you may, that may be in the way of you currently and to see how we can address um, those issues now and to ensure that you leave here with full clarity and understanding of what to expect and what's expected of you when completing your test. And I'm now going to open up the, I hope that, as I said, I provided a bit, uh, a bit of an insight. And I'm, I'm now going to open up the, the floor to take it, to take questions and to go through and to have a more of an in-depth discussion. So feel free to, um, you know, ask your questions and share any thoughts or any comments that you have on the back of the presentation. If there's anything that I've missed or haven't, you know, covered from your expectations from the beginning, please let me know. Again, if you have any questions, I'll, uh, can I, I'll, I'll suggest to use the Q&A button to ask your questions. So someone's asked a question which is not related to the e tray exercise. The question is, if the test is not unlocked before the deadline tomorrow, does this mean our applications are no longer valid? My suggestion would be to ring up the civil service, to ring up the FastStream team. There should be a contact details on faststream.gov.uk where how to approach the team. My suggestion would be to give them a call and to you know inquire from them to see if the, if this will be if you'll be impacted um by the deadline tomorrow so i'll suggest to get in touch with them as soon as possible Are there any questions or things that you would like to? So I know at the beginning, one of the things that someone said was um, understanding the e tray And that's from Mariam. Would you say that has been covered? Fantastic. So does anyone have any questions around the competencies or if anything that perhaps wasn't so clear about the civil service competencies that they would like to, you know, to for me to go through in more depth? So there's a question here that says, so is the E-Tray, is the E-Tray, so the E-Tray is essentially answering emails in terms of priority, which is based on the background information. Is that correct? That is correct. So you're being provided with a, with a background information and then you respond to the questions based on that. So the key is to, first of all, again, you're, you're timed. Um, the key is to yeah, understand the background information and then respond to the questions based on that. Any other question? You're welcome. Yes, it is like the situation of judgment tests. Um, so someone's asked, so is it like 
the situation of judgment test 2.0 it is um sort of they however this is more in this case is responding specifically to an email so you're still working based on a scenario that has been set so what i'll do i'll share my screen with you to show you a scenario of a of an e-trade exercise so i'm just going to share a screen uh, a version with you just to go through so you see what it looks like in reality just bear with me So, no, wrong screen, just bear with me. So here's an example of, um, can you all see the screen on the E-Tray exercise screen? Just give me a yes if you can see it or if you're having any difficulty seeing it. Okay, fantastic. So this is the website I mentioned to you earlier, assessmentday.co.uk. So this is a back-end version. So this is an example of an intro exercise. We'll go through this quickly for with you. So, um, so this is what you'll be given. First of all, this is the, an example of the background information. So in this case, it reads, Bannon and Leo Consulting is a firm of business strategists originally founded by brothers Robert and Gregory Bannon in Chicago under the moniker Bannon and Bannon. Following the rise in success of the consultancy during the 80s, Cynthia Leo partnered with the firm in 1989, resulting in Bannon and Leo Consulting as the company is now known. In fact, what I'll do, I'm just going to leave this, um, leave this for you guys to have a quick read through, just to um, get familiarized. So I'll give you the next sort of about two or three minutes or so just to read through the background information, and then we continue from there. Okay, someone said it's too small to read. Um, would you all prefer that I read it out? Okay, someone said they made, it, made the screen bigger. Okay. Is there anyone having any difficulty reading it from their screen? Just let me know if you have any difficulty reading, read, reading the scenario from your screen.
Are you all done or do you need a bit more time? Let me know if you're finished or require a bit more, a minute or two extra. Is there anyone that would require additional time or are, we, are you all good to go? If not, I'm now going to move on. So that gives you an idea of, of the background information. So the civil service will provide one based on the civil service. So, so this is then, you then be given a set of instructions of things to be aware of. So in this case, you have things such as an inbox, supporting documents. So your task is to respond to as many of these, of the emails as you can within the time limit of 60 minutes. In this case, the, for the civil service, it will be 80 minutes. It says you must read the background information, which gives you useful information about the role you are being asked to assume and the company that you're working for. When replying to the emails, try to imagine yourself in the work environment. You will not receive replies to any of your emails during the exercise. So reply to the best of your ability. But this is why it's important to, under, to understand the competencies, the civil service competencies, because then when you, because that would give you an insight or and it almost like a, give you a background insight into how civil service, how a civil servant would respond to any given scenario that they've been tasked with. So I want to highlight this section here that says, imagine yourself in a working environment. In this case, I would say, imagine yourself as a civil servant based on the competencies that has been uh, provided by the civil service. As well as the background information, you should also refer to the organogram, which is the organizational uh, chart. In this case, this document that I've got my um, cursor over, just bear with me, it's going to point it out. So that is this document right here. So that is what is known as the organogram. Which is right here. And then What you then want to do then, and then refer, also refer to the calendar, which is in this case, the calendar being at the, just scroll down, bear with me, just learning how to use this as we speak. And once you've done so, you must use the calendar to enter any appointments you schedule or are due to attend. Your, cal your, your use of the calendar will be assessed alongside your replies to the email. So these are all the instructions you'll be given before you start the test proper. Because I was doing a practice test earlier, this is why this has come up on the screen. So what I'm going to do is to start a new session. So this is what the test will look like in reality. The civil service layout might be different from what's on this screen, but it'll be something quite similar to what you have on the screen now. So here is the document I mentioned earlier. So this is the document. So the first thing you want to do is to read through the document before you start with your test. And here is your, and here is your calendar. And here is the organogram. So again, the civil service may provide you with something similar to this based on their own uh, uh, situation. And then you have your E-Trade instructions for you to go through before you start the test. So these are the things that you want to do first of all before starting the test. 
And then on here are the series of emails for you to go through. So these are the different emails for you to respond to. Is that clear so far? Or is there anything that you would like me to explain further before I move on? If it's clear, just let me know that's a yes. If it's not, let me know. I'll be able to go through, I'll be able to um, go back or repeat at any point that needs to be further clarified. If not, I will continue. Fantastic. Okay. So, so I'm just going to open, choose, just choose one of the emails. So, so this is what the exercise would look like. So a few things, again, the layout might be different for the civil service, but a few things that you want to take note of is issue importance, rates how important you think this issue is, i.e. how significant it is to get this right, and also rates how urgent you think this issue is, as in how quickly is it to be dealt with. So these are the things that you want to bear in mind that you'd be measured against when responding. So in this case, Again, you hear me use the word competencies a lot of the time. Again, your understanding of the competencies will then give you an idea of how to, how to base your responses to the question. So you'll be provided with an email. So in this case, um, it says, just a quick email to thank you for joining us during this hectic time. Cynthia is thrilled that you were willing to assist on the current projects given Ron's recent departure. I've noticed some information about the people You'll be working with over the next couple of weeks in the hope that it will help you to settle into our finance department and ease the transition period as you know we are going to require efficiency and uh, and initiative in order to complete the task at hand so it would be greatly valued if you could use your professional judgment when responding to your new colleagues i'm not sure which company model you have been following in the chicago branch but our office adheres to the perpetual improvement will which you can assess in your documents. If you are ever unsure of the procedures we would like you to follow while working with us or the standards we work to, we recommend that you have a look through it. If you have any queries or are unsure of what of who could provide valid input or certain matters, feel free to refer to the organogram and familiarize yourself with the personal structure. I've also attached some useful background information on the London team. Again, just from reading that, you can pick up a number of things already that, um, for example, I mean, one thing that I've picked up from reading this is particularly how they organization the culture. So again, different organizations have different ways of behaving. However, with this organization, they expect this person, this new employee, to behave according to what they expect. And this is, is a perfect example of why it's important to understand what the civil service expects in response to the questions based on that. So what I'm going to do is to go back to show you what the document that they were referring to is. So this is the document they're referring to, the perpetual, the perpetual improvement will. So again, the civil service provided you with something that's more relevant to them. And it gives you background information about the organization, in this case, the contact list, holiday leave policy, and sickness and absence policies. The reason I'm referring to these different documents is that you want to pay attention to the different documents that the civil service will provide you before you start the test. Once you, by getting, by going through the documents properly, you probably wouldn't need to spend so much time on the actual test in itself. I would say you want to spend a good number of time studying the documents first of all, familiarizing yourself with the documents before starting the test proper. So going back to the question again, you respond to the email and response, type in your response. And if there's anyone that you need to respond to, in this case, would you say this is urgent, this requires an urgent response or not? It is a question to everyone. Feel free to share your thoughts. Would you say this requires an urgent response or not? Okay, no. And I would agree with that. Um, could you share with me why you why you don't think it would, would anyone be we happy to share why they don't think it requires an urgent response? Nothing to action. Fantastic. 
So are you sure you said there's nothing to action to this, hence why I would not require, require it, but I think that's, that's absolutely uh, the case. So what we're going to, we're going to try another email to see. Uh, so in this case, uh, you would respond at the top to say, um, in terms of urgency, would you say issue of importance, would that be high or low? So someone would say low. Would anyone, was anyone else who disagrees that would they choose medium or high? Okay, someone said medium. Someone's raised their hand. Okay, I'm going to come to you, uh, Sandra. Sandra, I'm going to promote you to the panelists. I'm assuming that you have something that you'd like to share. You can turn off your screen. You can turn off your screen if you don't want to be, if you don't uh, show up on the screen. You can turn off your camera. Sorry, my I should have I should have uh, mentioned to you that there's a chance that you will be. Um, let me stop video. So I've stopped your video, Sandra, but could I, what would you like to share? Um, I think the subject should be a medium priority to the person in a sense of um, they have to learn the procedures for the new office in order for them to do the future tasks. So okay. It's not something you can just ignore, even though you don't have to respond to it. Okay. Is there anyone else who disagrees with that? Thank you for sharing that, Sandra. Thank you. So I would say, yeah, in terms of urgency, the urgency will be low. However, in terms of importance, I would agree to say that's medium based on Sandra's explanation. So you're then taken to, uh, let's try another one. So it says, as you know, there are some issues regarding the Backstar LLC account. They are concerned about the strategies we are planning to implement and don't, see convinced, and don't seem convinced that we can make a worthwhile improvement to the current figures. I think it is important that we meet with the directors and go over our assessment with them so, that, so they understand it better and feel more confident moving forward. The only problem is fitting the meeting in. I know that you already have some things booked into your calendar, but I really feel it's important they speak to a consultant. Baxter LLC are big clients and we don't want to lose them. I would appreciate your feedback as soon as possible, preferably no later than Tuesday. Feel free to bring anyone up to speed who you feel would provide valuable feedback concerning this matter. Also, I have reviewed your financial assessment of PNC Holdings that you asked me to check and I can see nothing wrong in, I can see nothing wrong. It looks good to go. So with this, um, I'm going to, I'm just going to mute uh, your speaker, Sandra. So with this, um, would you say this is a, a high, a low, medium, or a high importance. So again, if anyone would like to share their thoughts, let me know. I can promote you to a panelist in order to share, so everyone can hear your uh, to, to to hear your comments. So, is it, would you choose this? Is, would this be a high, low, or medium? Okay. And would and is there anyone who would choose differently? Right, so would you be happy to share why you would choose a high? level of importance. Important client. Would you like me to promote you so they can hear your, your to hear you share your thoughts or would you like to say it over text? Okay, text is okay, fantastic. So. 
Alicia's response is the client is an important client who doesn't seem happy. So I would say, yes, this would be uh, marked as a high. In terms of issue of urgency, would you, uh, would, what would you go with? High, low, medium or high? Again, I mean, I would choose for this as a high level of urgency. However, they haven't stated they haven't stated the date, but they've indicated that um, so they've made reference to urgency. So, are you you guys, some of you may be familiar with the time management matrix, so which is known as the urgent and importance, or very urgent and very important. So, in terms of urgency, urgency is something that needs to be dealt with has a time constraint or urgent time deadline. So an urgent matter could be, can you ring up? So earlier, given it, give, give you a real life example. This morning I came, or yesterday I came into work, had my to-do list and what I had planned to do. However, an urgent inquiry came in that I needed to address to. So that needed to be done at that moment, there and then, which meant I had to put everything else aside. So it's a difficult one to balance between what's urgent and what's important because sometimes something that's urgent may not be as important. Also, you can have something that's urgent and also be very important. Or you can have something that's important but not very urgent or something that's not important and also not urgent. So it's about using that to balance your schedule. So in this case, urgent would be it needed to be dealt with there and then yesterday. However, I had other important tasks to do which were not urgent, meaning I didn't have to finish them by 10 o'clock. I could have finished it by 12 or one or two or three, but I needed, because of the urgency, why did was to put aside the urgent, uh, so put aside important tasks to address the urgent one. Okay, so someone said this should be medium because the meeting needs to still be scheduled in. Yes, in terms of urgency, I would say that makes sense, I suppose, because they haven't indicated a date as to when it should be. If, they, if they'd said, get it done this morning or at that present moment, then that would be an urgent task. So yeah, I'd say medium would be a reasonable answer to go with, but in terms of importance, it would be very high. And if you notice as well, they've also made reference to calendar. So it's gonna go back to where it says, the only problem is fitting the meeting in. And I know that you already have some book, some things booked into your calendar, but I really feel it's important they speak to the consultant. Okay, so in this case as well, you may want to work on your calendar to see what you have scheduled and then type in a meeting so you can bring a meeting forward. So in this case, there's already a back to the LLC shareholder meeting here. So you might want to see if you can move this meeting to a later date and bring the meeting with this client forward. So again, these are things that you'll be assessing to see how you manage your calendar, to see how you manage your meetings, how you manage responses to email. These are the things that will be assessed during the process. Any question on that before I move on? Again, guys, feel free to let me know if there's anything that's not so clear that you'd like me to provide further clarity on. They haven't stated a time frame for the deadline to dealing with the matter at hand. But with that said, being a big client, I would say medium too. Okay. And this is where, again, going back to one of the things I mentioned about the civil service competences earlier is, you know, making an effective decision. So that it's about testing your own judgment to how you would address this situation. So it might be a case to see where you need to look in your calendar, to, as I mentioned earlier, to shift some of the meetings that you have that may not be as important. So in this case, could you move the meeting to, uh, to Tuesday and then bring this forward? So again, it's the order measure you against on those different situations as well. So let's do one more question before we move on to any Q and A. We're coming to the end of the close to the end of the webinar. So here's another scenario. So 
Firstly, welcome to the London office. I hope you are settling in and that the team have been helpful filling you in on any important matters. Secondly, I apologize for delving straight into business, but there is a matter concerning one of the junior consultants having booked holiday time during what looks set to be a very busy time for the company. It was originally something that I had asked Ron to deal with as he signed it off in the first place, but as you know, he is no longer working with us. I've spoken with Jessica and leave, and the leave was booked for her wedding. Also, when requesting the holiday, she did give the notice required. I am happy for you to deal with it in any manner you see fit, whether it involves canceling Jessica's holiday or if you can provide an alternative solution. Either way, I would be eager to hear your solution seeing as you have a fresh pair of eyes regarding this matter. If you could let me know your thoughts by the end of the day, that would be most appreciated. Also, thanks for your contribution to London office at this time. Straight away, what, what have you noticed from this email? Has anything jumped out at you just from reading this email? That's different from the other ones. It's an internal matter, that's correct. Anything else? Anything else jumps out? Thank you for sharing, Erica. So some of the things that I, okay, so conclusion must be met by the end of the day. And um, which means that that would be, that there's a deadline to it, meaning it's urgent, it's a timely response needed. Okay, so I suppose that gives us the answer particularly around you know, the level of urgency. So in this case, you would issue is a, I'm sure everyone, I'm sure everyone would agree that's a high, it's, it's high in terms of the urgency. In terms of, what else have you noticed? There's other things I've noticed on there as well. I mean, one of the things I've, I've definitely picked up and which some of you might have picked up on as well is it requires a reply. So in this case, in this scenario, you'll be expected to type a reply back to uh, Mark Robinson. So other things for you to be aware of when completing it is, so the, there is a need for each button. So here it says CC. So someone that you need to copy into this, if CC into this email. In this case, you haven't been, you have not been asked to, to copy anyone or CC anyone in the email. So there'll be no need to use this currently. Well, something that you want, you want to bear in mind as well. How would we know when we would need to reply to this email. So as a question there, say, how would we know when we would need to reply to these emails, to these? Um, so in this case, the, um, Mark Robinson has asked for a reply to let to say, so let me know your thoughts by the end of, to the, by the, end of the day. Or say, if you could let me know your, your, your thoughts by the end of the day, that would be most appreciated. So that's a clue. However, I want to highlight something here as well. By reading the email, it says, if you could let me know your thoughts. So again, this doesn't mean that you have to give your thoughts by the end of the day, actually. So I stand corrected. Although I mentioned earlier that it's urgent, it's not. Again, you may choose to say, oh, Mark, can I get back to you by tomorrow morning? Because I have other urgent tasks that I'm working on currently. So these are things that you want to also bear in mind when making judgments based on depending on the scenario that you've been set. And Again, you have to also judge to say, is this critical? How important is this email? So from what you've read, would you say, what would you place the level of importance? Would you say it's low, medium, or high? Would anyone like to share if they think this would be a, in terms of level of importance, low, medium or high? Someone said, Aisha says a hard one. Would you like to share why you, okay. Medium importance, do you need someone to work and cover for this period during the absences? Okay. Would anyone else, is anyone else that has a different opinion?
No. So I'm just going to highlight something that I just picked up on from reading this email. So this is, although this is for Jessica's wedding. So to Jessica, this is absolutely crucial. You know, she cannot miss her wedding. And so, however, to the business, it's also important to have someone there present to cover Jessica's position. And Jessica has followed the internal procedures. She's followed exactly what's expected of her. So now they're asking you to give your, to share your thoughts. So in a way, I would say this is hi. So that's the suggestion. So again, this is where, so Erica has just said, can we get someone from another department to cover them or get a temp? That is a good, that's, a, that's an alternative option. Again, by reading the background information and seeing, you know, the teams and people within the organization, you may want to give a more factual response by saying, oh, there is a person in this department, or you may want to give the person's name based on their role to say this person potentially cover um, in Jessica's absence. So again, that's the yeah, that, that's, that's an absolute, that's something that you can do. Again, with this, I would say it's high because due to the nature is someone's wedding and you don't want, you know, they, you know, you can't have someone miss their wedding. And it just means that the real fault here is Ron who signed it off, but who else no longer works in the organization. So in here, they expect to give you a judgment. So again, with the civil service test, you may be asked to give your judgment or respond based on your opinion. So again, by relaying it back to everything to the civil service will be set based on the competence of the civil service. Whereas in this case, this is a hypothetical situation that's been set based on for, for a consultancy. So this gives you an idea of actually how to respond to those situations depending on the organizational needs and culture and how they behave. Any question on that before I move on? Was it clear? Is there anything that perhaps was it that could have been clearer that you'd like me to go over again? If that is a no, what I'm now going to do is, um, what I'd say again, you can do more, uh, do more practice. If you go on assessmentday.co.uk, they have access to free E-Trade exercises. Obviously, one thing to bear in mind that the purpose is to practice, to get used to responding to E-Trade scenario questions. However, it's important that when you do the real thing is to shift your focus and your mindset to that of being a civil servant. And as I said, I always mention this word to you, refer, respond to questions based on the competency, civil service competencies. So I hope that's given you a bit of an understanding of how the E-Trade exercise works and how to respond to the questions. And you know things to be able to, to 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 bear in mind when responding to them. So again, it's about keeping an eye on the time. It's using the supporting documents that's been provided, and you know the good thing is you can always refer back to the supporting documents before you press send. And then once you've completed all your tests, the one thing you want to do is to press here to say finish exercise, and then you submit your tests. So it wouldn't be too, this, the civil service one wouldn't be too dissimilar from what's on here, but it would be laid out in a very different manner. Again, a few things to bear in mind when making a judgment is the subject of the email. So if you look at the subject of the email, again, this is welcome to London. This is back to LLC, holiday entitlement, employee dispute. This gives you an idea of the, of also, the level of urgencies to the email. So it's something that you may want to bear in mind as well in terms of the paying attention to the uh, email subjects. So for example, the final one says unwanted publicity. So again, we've got a bit of a, a, a problem concerning the privacy of one of our clients. I'm not sure how, we will, how well you've been briefed on the backs of the LLC project, but they didn't want word to get out of the, that they were using a financial management consultancy. 
they were concerned that either the press or that the competitors would be would put negative spin on it and they're experiencing financial trouble so again this it already gives you the level of importance um simply by just looking at the email subject So I'm going to just take the next uh, few minutes just to go through any final questions that you may have um, or provide any further clarity of things that may not have been explained clearly before we round up. So I'm going to spend the next uh, sort of five to 10 minutes to go through any final questions um, that you have. The webinar is officially over. So if you would like to, you know, leave, by all means you're free to do so. I just want to say thank you for joining in and, you know, wishing you all the best when you start your E-Trade exercise. And for those of you who like to stay behind to go through any questions, I'm happy to spend the next five to 10 minutes to go through any questions with you. You're welcome, Erica. So just to gauge where you guys are at, would you say by going through this, has that helped you to understand, uh, how much has that helped you understand the E-Trade exercise process? And has, has that helped you to, um, and how would you say, has that given you you know, a bit of confidence to address the civil service competencies, uh, so the civil service E-Trade exercise. So someone's asked a question to say, do we get any scores for our E-Trade when we complete them? When is the pass mark? You will not get the scores straight away. The civil service would let you know they would let you know, they would go through your answers and then get back to you um, at a later date. So no, you would not receive the scores straight away. So there's no, I hope that answers your question, Aisha. Again, just something to, 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 to mention following Alicia, uh, Aisha's question is, in some cases, the reason why that, well, in some cases, the scores will be adjusted based on the wider performance from everyone who are applying to the civil service program. So based on the average weighting. So if people have scored really high, they may push the pass rate to the pass mark to really high, or if overall across board the performance is not to the standard expecting, they may also reduce the overall the, the pass mark, the required pass mark to go through to the next stage as well. Something to bear in mind in terms of the scoring, but you will not receive the scores straight away. So I hope that answers your question. So I have another I have another question which which reads. Do you need to complete them in accordance to their order? I do not believe so. I do not believe you. The main thing is to get through all the questions, um, is to answer all the questions, but I don't think they need to be responded to in, the, in accordance to the order. And I don't think that they're not linked either. I don't think the emails are all linked. So the answer would be no. Or do you also get marks for picking up the priorities by saying, looking at the subject? So the reason I mentioned, so, but, so let me read this again. So do you, or do you also get marks for picking up their priorities by saying, by say, looking at the subject of the emails? No. The reason I made reference to this, paying attention to this email subject is to give you an idea of the urgency, whether the email will be an, a really urgent or important email. By this, I mean, when responding to this part of the question, i.e. issue of importance or issue of urgency. So I have another question. Is there anything we can do to really give ourselves the best chance of passing the E-Trade? Yes. I would say, the first thing I would say do which you've heard me said already, is to study the civil service competency framework. Study the competencies, understand the competencies. If there are things that you're not sure about, question them, get in touch with us to go through anything you're not sure about the competency framework. But I would say the number one thing is study it. Because everyone who's been, who has been successful, they've always referred back to 
understanding the competencies. This is where most people go wrong by not taking the time to understand it. As well as understand the competencies, I would say practice e-tray exercise. So practice different e-tray exercise because that, that's just to give you an idea of how to respond to the questions, how to respond to an e-tray, how to just to get familiar with the process and how it works. So it would be study the competencies and practice, practice, practice. So that's, that's why my suggestion would be in terms of a best chance of passing. And there's another question. So should we look at the other grades for the competency or just focus on level three? You just, at this stage, you just want to focus on level three, which is the higher executive office. So it's either the HEO or SEO. So those are the only two areas that you need to focus on at this present time. So that's level three for you if you're applying to the fast stream program. So I hope that answers your question. So I have room for one or two more questions before we call it a day. Any final question before we before I uh, before leaving? If the okay. So someone's asked another question. So what level? Do we focus on if we're applying for the graduate program? For the level that you're all applying to, you only need to focus on the, the level that applies to you is level three. So that's level level three in the competencies. So that's for the SEO, which is a senior executive office, or a HEO, which is a high executive office. Those are the two areas that you want to focus on. Just level three is the area applicable to you at the moment. I hope that answers your question, uh, Sandra. And the other question from Aisha is, because for the competency, there were some options I could pick, but where for more senior grades. So I was unsure whether I should pick them as they were outside of the level three. Or you mean for the SJT? For the situation of judgment test, again, for everything right from the situation of judgment test to the assessment day, all fast stream programs, the level that you want to focus on in the competencies is level three. That's the only area that's applicable to everyone applying to the fast stream program also applying to the e uh, so not e -tray, to the Summer Diversity Internship Programme and the Early Diversity Internship Programme. It's just the level three. So I have another question, which level should we focus on for the Summer Internship? Again, um, yeah, so that would be also level three. So level three applies to Fast Stream, Summer Diversity and Early Diversity Internship Programme. So I hope that answers all of your questions. Again, if if you're not sure if there's anything you'd like to, to you like further clarification on, I'm just going to have the our email address back on the screen again, which is the best way to get in touch with us. Oh, bear with me, just trying to work out how to uh, share the contact details with you again. So if you have any questions, this is the best way to reach us, um, is send an email to campus at elevationnetworks.org. On that note, I'm now going to end the webinar. Just wanna say uh, all the best with your applications. And if you have any, if you like one-to-one, -one, further one-to-one -one coaching, again, let us know. I've sent an email yesterday uh, with all the 
with the available dates between now and the end of October. We'll be releasing dates for November over the coming uh, by next week. So if you want to book any one-to-one -one coaching in the meantime, please let us know and we'll be able to accommodate, uh, accommodate you um, with that. On that note, have a fantastic day and best wishes.